even in that first semester uh, of data collection, which that, that got turned into an article eventually, um, I started seeing immediately, first of all, our students were interacting with more classroom teachers, right? Which teacher ed majors want that, okay? Um, I believe that I'm a teacher, but some of my students think I'm not like a real teacher because now I work in higher ed. So they want to talk to the real teachers. I actually do believe that I'm a real teacher, but they, yeah, K-12. So they get to interact with more K-12 teachers, which they like, uh, and I can see the value of that. They're trying on this teacher identity which is new for them. So by interacting with more practicing teachers, they start to feel a little bit more like a real teacher themselves. They're finding more mentors. So we typically rely upon one or two face-to-face -face mentors to give beginning teachers all the mentoring they need. Beginning teachers need lots of mentoring, lots of different kinds of mentoring. So they need content mentoring, they need classroom management mentoring, they need school politics mentoring, they need just like someone to talk to when they need to cry because teaching is emotional work, right? So they need all these sources of mentoring and maybe one person can't provide that. So there's these virtual mentors that they have access to through Twitter. More experts, so I teach classes with people who are preparing to be seven different kinds of teaching. I'm not expert on seven different topics. So I quickly learned that when the students said, well, how does flipped learning apply to the music classroom? Instead of making something up, I could say, go talk to teachers on Twitter and see what the music teachers on Twitter say about how flipped learning could or could not apply to a music classroom. And then that also brought this sort of bridging of theory to practice. So students could see examples on Twitter of concepts we talked about in class being enacted in real classrooms. 